All right, so we've got cell references down. Now we're ready to jump into building basic formulas or calculations utilizing Microsoft Excel. Now I'm going to hopefully bring back some memories of your arithmetic classes, your math classes back inside of grammar school. Uh, for me, math wasn't my strong suit. I'd go to math and I'd rather scribble in the margins of my binder and turn the lecture, the teacher off. It was kind of a drag for me. My kids come home from school today and they ask me how to perform simple little math equations. It's like, oh, oh I'll go ask your mom, she's down the hall. You know, I, but it, the nice thing here within Excel, as long as we understand the basics, you know, mathematical operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, potentially an exponent. Excel does a lot of the work for us. We just got to understand the basics. What is it that I want to get? And then Excel does the math. It's like whipping out your calculator. Excel is really a, a super powered calculator. You just plug in the numbers and the proper operators and it does the rest for you. So let's take a look. Using cell references, using standard mathematical operators like addition and subtraction, multiplication and so on, we're going to perform some calculations here. Now there's one thing, one consistent element that every single calculation from the simplest to the most advanced calculation you can perform inside of Excel. Each of them have something in common. I was talking about earlier entering different types of data. Formulas or calculations are a type of data. But in order for Excel to recognize that you are entering a calculation of formula, you start them with an equal sign. And again, this is true from the simplest to the most advanced formula you can create inside of Excel. You always start them with an equal sign. Take a look. So I want to calculate, I want to add up my dollar amounts here, my, my money for the month of January. So I'm going to click inside of cell B10. That's where I want my total to be. And once again, from the simplest to the most advanced, you always start them with a an equal sign. I'll type in equals. That just lets Excel know that, oh, hey, what you're about to do here is a formula, a calculation. All right. So now I want to add up those values right there. Now I could do this. I could do this. I could say 1200. That's how much I spent for rent, right? plus 50, I'm just using an operator here, mathematical operator addition, just the plus symbol, plus 100, plus 300, plus 50, right there. I've just grabbed the one, two, three, four, five dollar amounts that I have there for my different bills for January. Equals this, plus this, plus this, plus this. When I'm all done, I'll hit my enter key, $1,700 for the month of January. Okay. What do you think? Let's double click that cell. Let's open that formula back up again. There it is. Just double clicking the formula. What did we just talk about in the previous lecture? We talked about cell references. Am I referencing cells right now? No. I'm, I'm referencing dollar amounts. I'm actually refer referencing values rather than addresses, cell references, which means, take a look, which means if I change something, like this is 1200, let's say I change it to 1500. Hit my enter key. Ooh, it's still 1700. That should have jumped up by 300 bucks, right? That's not right. Well, the reason why my formula is still looking at 1200, even though that cell up above changed its value. So this is where the importance of cell references come into play. So let me get rid of this. I'm going to select that B10 cell and hit my delete key on my keyboard. Just wipe it out. Gone. Let's do this the proper way. So once again, all formulas, they start with what? In equals. Now, rather than referencing the cell values, 1500 plus 50 plus 100 plus 300 and so on, what am I going to reference? The cells, the addresses. So I'm going to say B5, and I love this part. This was introduced in Excel 2003. B5, I can see that it just highlighted cell B5, and it color-coded it. They're blue. 
Now I bring in my operator, my mathematical operator, addition, plus, what's next, B6, color-coded once again, plus B7, plus B8, plus B9, look at that. I'm now building a formula, referencing the cell's location, their addresses, B5 plus B6 plus B7 plus B8, and so on, and I get this nice little color coding. This is especially helpful when you have cells all over the place within a worksheet. B5 and H20 and J2000 and so on. Nice color coded so you can visually see what cells you're referencing. Great for controlling errors within your formulas. Now I'm all done. I'll hit my enter key. There's my 2000, great. Now let's update this value again. It shouldn't be 1500, that should be 1200. So I'll double click and just change that. Hit my enter key and I've updated the formula back to 1700 because I'm referencing the cell's address, B5, B6, rather than their values. So building a simple little formula, just using some mathematical operator, in this case some addition, the plus symbol. We could do subtraction, minus, division with the forward slash, multiplication with the asterisk, and if you ever need it, you got the caret symbol. It's a little triangle. It's shift six on your keyboard. This will be your exponent. Mathematical, simple formulas. Excel's doing the math. You just gotta build the formula yourself. So practice this. I'm gonna hit my enter key here, get my 1700 back. Drop in February's total, March's total. Do a total for rent, for phone. Do this inside the E column. Practice building some formulas here. Get a feel for building your formulas. And remember, always start them with what? Your equal sign. Try it out.